Hi, in this video, we are going to first explore the different multi container design patterns for Kubernetes and then dig deep further into the sidecar containers. So, if you always wanted to know what are the Kubernetes sidecar containers, what are their benefits and drawbacks, then this is the video for you to watch. You can also do the hands on along with me as you watch this video. More details about the hands on lab, please look at the description. Now, before I jump into the multi container design pattern, let us quickly review the concept of a pod. So, first of all, Kubernetes pod is a logical entity in which we can have one or more containers. Like in this case, we can see a pod is having multiple containers here. Now, in Kubernetes pods, all of these containers shares the same network namespace, which means they are going to be a single IP address per pod. And if I access the pods IP with respect to a given port, then the respective container response back. So for example, if I am serving the main container on port 8080, then if I hit the pods IP on port 8080, then the main container would respond back. And among themselves, all of these containers communicate over localhost. So that is how the networking looks like within the Kubernetes pods. Also, if I am going to have a volume attached to a pod, then each container in the pod can mount the respective volume, of course, at the location of their own choice. Now, with this understanding, let us now look at the different multi-container design patterns in Kubernetes. The first one here is the init containers. So, init containers help us perform something before the main app comes up. So, for example, if you wanted to get the secrets before the main app comes up, you can use init containers. Similar use case can be, for example, if you want to get the database schema before the main database container comes up or if you wanted to kind of do the database migration every time the app starts, we can use init containers. Init containers starts before the main app comes up and there is a precondition that these containers need to finish with success only then the main container can come up. And if I define multiple init containers, then they would run in the sequence they are defined. Then we have the sidecar containers. Now the primarily objective of having the sidecar containers is to perform some kind of complementary jobs for me. So for example, here we have a web server, web server write some logs to a shared volume which the sidecar container can read and maybe ship to a centralized logging endpoints. The other use case can be in which we have this shared volume and in this shared volume, we dump our content, for example, images, files and so on. And these can be served by my web server. So I'm not modifying any of my web server setting and I'm still getting the latest files which were dumped by the sidecar containers. So there can be other use cases like this. Next one we have is the adapter container. Now, as the name suggests, it is going to be used to adapt to a given situation. So for example, if you have different kind of apps and these apps spit out the logs in different formats. So for example, one of the apps says, I'm going to have the timestamp first and host name later. The other app says, I'm going to put down the host name first and the timestamp later. And if I send these logs to my log servers, then it's going to be very difficult to index it. So what I can do is I can have some of these adapter containers along with my application. And these containers would be responsible to make sure 
our logs when it goes out of the application is having the same format. So once the logs go out from the adapter container, they would be in the same format and which we can index very easily with our centralized log server and so on. The last one we have here is the ambassador pattern. We would find its use case in the case of service catalog or kind of proxy settings. So what we have here is the main application and this main application need to connect to a database. But I want to have a flexibility to connect to the database of my choice at my will. To achieve this, what we can do is, we can say the main application always connect to a container available in the same pod for which we would have the very well-defined endpoint. So for example, if I say the main app connect to my database at localhost colon 4000. Now for this main application, database is always available at this particular endpoint. But with the help of this ambassador container, I can change the setting to connect to a local test or a prod environment. So my main app would transparently connect to the environment I would wish. You can think of the similar case in case of different clouds. So for example, you have deployed a database in different cloud providers. Now your main app can connect to any one of the cloud providers database service on the fly without even knowing it. And that is where you would find the use case of the ambassador container. There is a research paper which talks about this multi-container design pattern in detail which you can find here. So I would highly recommend that you take some time out and read this particular paper. Let us now bring back our focus to the sidecar containers. When we are using sidecar containers, we don't have to put or build all the features in the main application. For example, logging to a remote machine, configuring a custom monitoring and so on. We can do all of these things with the help of sidecar containers which we are adding with the main app inside our pod. And these sidecar containers can be written in different languages. And also once we have built a sidecar containers, it can be used for multiple other applications as well. For example, after deciding our logic for logging and monitoring, we just need to insert those sidecar containers on the fly into different pods and our work is done. Also, if I have to insert some kind of dynamic configuration for my main application, I can use sidecar containers for that as well. Now, there are some drawbacks also with the sidecar containers. So, as we are going to use the same loopback interface for all the sidecar containers, our main app can get affected some point. So, that is why we don't recommend to use sidecar containers when we are running the workload for trading or gaming. Sometimes it can also become difficult to debug because there are multiple containers in the same pod, but that is very unlikely. Now there is a cost involved for having multiple sidecar containers in the same pod because all of these containers are going to need some resources. So of course you need to provision higher infra if you are using lots of sidecar containers. So with that, let us now do the hands-on with the sidecar containers. And if you want to do the hands-on lab along with me, you should open up this URL on your browser and then click on the lab setup. This is going to set up an instance behind the scene on which we would perform our hands-on lab. So this takes around 80 seconds to come up and post that we would do our hands-on lab. So by the time the lab is coming up, let us look at what our app is consist of. So in this particular case, what we are having is we are having an app which is having two containers. One is the main app, another is the sidecar container. And we also have a common volume which is being shared among both the containers. So in the first main container, we are writing our logs 
into that particular folder. So we are deploying an nginx and that nginx would write logs in this particular folder. And now from the sidecar container, we are now going to read the content of the log files which we are going to create in this particular shared volume. So if I look at further here, you can see we are just doing the cat of the access.log file which is inside the share folder what I have there. So let us now go ahead and create the respective application there. So our app is now up and running and we also have a respective service for it which is of type node port and serving on port number 31001. Now if I look at the logs of the sidecar container, we can see that it is just giving us the echo message which is read log from the main container. So as of now it is not able to read any logs from the main app because we have not accessed it yet. So now what we'll be doing is I'm going to open this lab URL and by this I'm going to get to my web service and as you can see it is now being served. Once I have accessed the website few times if I go back and look at the logs from the sidecar container we can see that we are now getting the logs from the main application as well because these logs are being saved in the shared volume which are being read by my sidecar container. Now there are some other use cases of the sidecar containers as well. So for example, I have a legacy app which cannot serve the HTTPS traffic but I want to deploy this particular app on Kubernetes. So what I can do is I can have a Kubernetes pod. In this Kubernetes pod I can deploy my main application but in front of that I would also deploy another container which would behave like a reverse proxy. So our HTTPS traffic is going to come to the sidecar container on some port number and from there it is going to be forwarded to our main application which is within the same pod and over HTTP. So my traffic within the pod is HTTP but from the outside world it is HTTPS. So my work is done. Similarly I can configure my authentication logic via the sidecar containers and keep the business logic inside the application what I have there. So by doing that I can just build a universal authentication logic which I can have with different kind of applications and everything would just work out. So I don't have to write the authentication logic separately with each application there. I already covered the other use case uh, earlier in which we have a shared volume sidecar container can write some content here which the app container can read for example images files and so on then we can also get the support for the dynamic configurations with the help of sidecar containers. So I hope you find this video useful and worth of your time. So now go ahead and apply your multi-container design pattern knowledge in the applications you deploy on Kubernetes. Thank you.